China's policy easing did provide some helpful cushion to growth. Continuing to make progress on COVID restrictions would open the door to a strong rebound in economic activity.北京深圳新加坡和曼谷会场有效地切入世界具备更开放的姿态提供更开放的平台就在今天我受邀参加请在APEC的国内外重磅嘉宾 然后我呢，做峰会的闭幕致辞，并且呢向大家汇报这次我在呃海外参加峰会线下面对面交流的一些感受。另外，我在APEC的活动还有财新在海外的四个分场，即将通过回放让所有的听众和读者分享。中共二
我们期待以这次中国领导人密集出访为契机，中国逐步恢复各个层次的对外交往与交流合作。线上不降温，线下勤添柴。财新周刊的最新的社评，谈的就是如何稳步恢复线下国际交往。财经峰会切实践行，所以我这次就专赴海外，为峰会拓展新的内容和形式，使我们这场期待中的年度思想盛宴，在更大范围、在国际交往的意义上获得回响。财经峰会所依托的是财经传媒这个平台。再次，我也想向大家宣布一个好消息：财经传媒的线上订阅现在已经进入第五个年头，取得不俗的成绩，至今年十月底。已经有九十余万付费读者。众所周知，财新的媒体，该是我们的老婆，推出线上付费内容，旨在聚合理性的、勤于思考的读者，不以流量而以内容为王，提升高品质新闻的传播价值。这也是国际主流新闻媒体普遍采用的模式。而靠你们，也靠广大读者支持。我们已经多次进入国际报刊联盟发布的全球付费媒体排名前十名，到今年年中，则超过日本的日经新闻，成为第九。这就等于我们成为英美之外全球最大的订阅媒体，这是我们有可能在全球主流媒体的新闻传播中保持前沿地位，也为向全球讲好中国故事，实现双向沟通，搭建起一个融媒体水准的。公信力平台，尤氏则依托财新传媒平台举办的财新峰会，获得了强而有力的支点和源源不断的思想资源，能够有显著的特色、开放的场景、富于冲击性的影响和与时代相呼应的纵深度。我们和你们共同努力，在过去十多年中打造财新峰会，纵使在新冠猖獗的年头，也坚持不懈。并且寻求新的突破。在此，我要感谢诸位在过往十多年，特别是今年，对我们一如既往的支持和认可。我在此预祝财新峰会圆满成功。没有，我让他 m e 让大家坐下。不是，我让大家坐下，没有开始。共享发展新机遇。Entered into、uh, recession. I hope that that's not the case, but I fear 
uh, that uh, it uh, may be. Neither the United States nor China will benefit from a rising instability in many developing countries if they are not able to handle their debt burdens. And so my hope is that whatever the issues in the broader relationship, there can be a period once again of cooperation between the United States and China on the management of uh, global uh, demand, on maintaining the flow of uh, global Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, welcome to our on-site guests at Caixin Summit 2022 Singapore track. And a very warm tropical welcome to our audiences in Beijing and online. My name is Han Xu. This is the 13th year we're hosting Caixin Summit, and this year is a little special. For the first time, we're hosting this event at four different locations simultaneously. Beijing, Shenzhen, Singapore, and Bangkok. Our session today will be streamed back live to our main Beijing venue. This year, we also introduced a new segment of rowing together with some of our guests this morning. I hope you had fun and are not too tired. Now, without further ado, let's welcome the guests of our first session on the topic of reviving multilateralism. Mr. Zhang Tao, Chief Representative for Asia and the Pacific, Bank for International Settlements, who is also the former Deputy Managing Director of IMF. Mr. Takehiko Nakao, former President of the Asian Development Bank, who will be joining us online. Mr. Bert Hoffman, Director of the East Asian Institute and Professor in Practice, Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, NUS. The moderator for this session is Ms. Li Xin, Managing Editor of Caixin Global. Welcome. Hello, hello, thank you, and very glad to share the stage with two distinguished speakers and old friends of Taishin, and online with Nako Sanozo as well, a, a very familiar face to uh, Taishin Summit watchers. Um, today's topic is multilateralism. We have three speakers with enormous experience in multilateral institutions. I will start with them with a little bit of history on what the multilateral institution has done right to jumpstart the economy and the development in developing Asia. If you can bring us to the good old days, and then we'll come back to what has changed in our time. Um, start probably with, on my right hand side, uh, Zhang Tao in the venue. You have more than 10 years on the IMF, um, the um, Deputy Managing Director from 2016 to 2020, 2021. What changes have you seen over the decade? Great, and first of all, the, uh, thank you, uh, Chen Xin, uh, for having me here. And very glad to join the uh, friends and colleagues around the world. Um, and the questions, I think, have the answer by itself, uh, if just looking around the world. But here I just want to mention uh, two things. Um, what happened in Asia, uh, just look at the uh, 
poverty reductions and uh, living standards improvement. Um, another thing is, of course, the, uh, the integration, the word. Uh, let me uh, address the, uh, the two aspects uh, in a little bit more details, um, just a little bit more, because I know uh, time is limited. The, um, the poverty reductions, I think later on, Nagao-san will have a lot, of, a lot of things to say, because the, uh, the ADB is the one. Um, the, uh, have the mandate, at least one of the mandate there. Um, so um, I think the, uh, we don't have to say anything on, on, on the numbers, but the, uh, I know ADB had a report, uh, at least uh, I didn't follow very closely, but there's a report back to, uh, uh, I think, 2012 uh, by ADB. Uh, the report said the, uh, the, uh, there are two-thirds of the world poor population living in Asia. And, and but the, uh, the, the poverty reduction just happened r very rapidly. Uh, one of the numbers ADB cited over there by then is during the 2005 to 2008, um, 150 million population already moved out of the uh, uh, poverty. And most recently, the World Bank, where the, the birth uh, also, the uh, work for a long time. Um, the uh, in the World Bank had a report in 2022. Uh, basically, uh, said the uh, uh, there the just China alone, um, 800 million people are now moving out of the poverty uh, in the last uh, uh, 40 years. So the phenomena is uh, is tremendous, and so the. Uh, uh, no need to say more. Asia benefit hugely from uh, what's going on in the world. And here I would want to emphasize one thing, which is my second point is integrations. So during the last 40 years, um, Asia not only become more integrated within, uh, you know, within themselves, uh, the regional integrations, uh, but also the Asia uh, become much more uh, integrated with the rest of the world. This is in terms of the trade, uh, investment, and also uh, the uh, human, uh, you know, the, the movement across border. Um, of course, the, uh, one of the things I want to point out or highlight at right, uh, this, uh, this point is, you know, look at the supply chains. Uh, people are saying global supply chains. Asia, obviously, is a major chunk out, uh, of it. And, uh, and these days, uh, in Singapore, uh, I participate in quite a few number of the meetings. Conferences. It's a lot of people talking about, you know, the supply chains. Uh, the, uh, but I have to say that the supply chains contributed greatly in th in terms of both the uh, the efficiencies and uh, resilience. And of course, I hope down the road uh, the uh, they will continue to play the role, following, you know, the uh, more uh, the uh, fundamental economic logic uh, or forces. Uh, when they're dealing with uh, other challenges, including the uh, political and uh, social challenges. Let me stop here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Zhang Tao, for a very comprehensive uh, explanation of that. And then we'll turn to Bert. Um, 27 years at the World Bank, I believe, and most of that probably in Asia and a long time in China and left Beijing with a friendship award by the Chinese government. So how would you say um, that World Bank has changed Asia and changed China in particular? Well, look, uh, uh, first, I think Zhang Tao is absolutely right. Uh, I think the international system as was created after the, after the Second World War has been tremendously beneficial for the world, but particularly for Asia. And uh, second, what I think is the, the, the system has also proven to be quite resilient. I mean, if I'm, I'm old enough to know uh, a, a number of the crises that happened, including the breakdown of the Bretton Woods currency system in the early 70s, uh, uh, the Asia financial crisis, the breakdown of the Soviet Union and the absorption of those countries uh, of the former Eastern Bloc into the, into the global system. That is remarkable. And it has been enormously beneficial. And Zhang Tao already mentioned some of some of the numbers uh, for for the World Bank, which is part of that system. And, and yes, it has been my employer for 27 years, so I'm obviously biased. Uh, but that system also created the stability and the, uh, um, if you want, a consensus 
that development was part and parcel of the deal. So it was not just a free-for-all in, in a market system, but it was also, uh, if you want, a multilaterally driven mm -hmm. system of development banks, ADB, World Bank, others, uh, that helped countries uh, develop. Of course, uh, in China, the World Bank did play, especially at the beginning, quite a special role. There were a window to the world and brought in the knowledge on market systems that at that point was lacking in China. Of course, that role, I mean, that's, that's history. But nevertheless, I think that knowledge role of multilateral institutions is as important. Still, the IMF, the World Bank, others, they bring knowledge to countries that might sometimes be overwhelmed with the problems that they face in, the, in, in managing the, the, the economic system domestically and internationally. So uh, there's a lot of good to, uh, uh, to be said about the multilateral system. Thank you, thank you, Bert. And the knowledge role is something I think we all appreciate, and I, I think it's evident in China's development as well. And let's turn online to Nakosan online. You are the ninth president of ADB and stay there for seven years. And congratulations to your new book on your uh, time at ADB. It's a very interesting read. Um, how would you describe the change that has taken place, and what was ADB's role? Yes, uh, the uh, we published. I mean, ADB published the book of uh, Asia Journey to Prosperity. Uh, it was uh, the very comprehensive account with the fifteen chapters uh, from nineteen uh, sixties to two thousand eighteen. It was published two years ago, and uh, it discussed how Asia could uh, achieve uh, growth and poverty reductions in these fifty years. It was based on. By the way, uh, the subtitle is uh, Policy market and uh, technologies because uh, these three elements uh, contributed a lot to the uh, achievements of growth and poverty left and so on so it is uh, not quite right or uh, actually uh, the mistake to regard asia's growth uh, just based on the government policies or the market without uh, the technology it's wrong uh, the asia has uh, uh, educated people well and has achieved the health uh, uh, kind of uh, the improvement, and also it has uh, included uh, so many uh, parts of uh, technologies, and we are now, I mean, Asia is now developing its own technology, and if you look at the uh, uh, technology level of uh, Singapore, Korea, China, and others, uh, it is uh, now changing the world. So uh, it is what uh, I really want to uh, emphasize in the beginning. And multilateral institutions like the World Bank and ADB and others also made a real uh, contribution to this achievement. And uh, as uh, uh, by the way, um, Mr. Jantao and Mr. Hoffman, uh, nice to meet you. And I'm very sorry that I couldn't join in Singapore uh, to see to, to renew our uh, the friendship. Uh, but uh, what I really want to say is that uh, uh, the World Bank, ADB have. Uh, by the way, there is uh, some translations um, uh, coming. So, yeah. So, uh, so what I want to say is that, uh, as uh, Mr. Hoffman mentioned, the ADB and World Bank. Uh, by the way, translations are coming to my uh, uh, voice, and uh, so maybe there will be some confusion. Can you stop uh, giving the Chinese translation to me? That so that we can uh, can uh, we shouldn't have a, a, a mixture of uh, the voices. So uh, the uh, uh, the ADB and World Bank and others uh, provided uh, the technologies uh, uh, and also expertise. Uh, such